10 years ago, the 2013 class of high school football recruits chose their universities, eager to begin their college careers. Looking at the rivals' top 100, there's plenty of names that many of you will recognize. And for the life of me, I can't believe Derrick Henry was not considered a five-star recruit, considering his size and high school numbers. But as you can see by how many recognizable names are on screen, this class is completely stacked. Yet, none of these guys cracked the top 10. As I do every year, we will take a look at each of these top 10 recruits, show where they came from, find out how their college careers went, and see if they managed to make it to the league. Anyways, let's dive in. Coming in at number 10, the top recruit out of Tennessee, Jalen Ramsey. Ramsey was a freak athlete in high school. He was a two-sport athlete, and his track and field marks in high school are absolutely ridiculous. His 25-foot, 3-inch long jump set the Tennessee State record, which was also good for second in the country that year. On the football field, his athleticism, combined with his elite instincts, were a force on both sides of the ball. He went on to earn a five-star grade from rivals and ended up committing to Florida State. Immediately, Ramsey was a game changer. Ramsey became the first FSU true freshman corner to start since Deion Sanders. And as Florida State went on to go undefeated and win the national title, Ramsey earned freshman All-American honors, and he continued to excel after that season. By the end of his junior year, Ramsey was a two-time All-American, multiple award finalist, and considered by many scouts as the top defensive back in the upcoming NFL draft class. While researching him, I found two interesting things about his time in college. Number one, Ramsey wore three different uniforms throughout his three seasons, the last of which being 17, and he had to get permission from FSU legend Charlie Ward to wear it since that number was retired. And no joke, he would only wear 17 when he returned kicks. Then he would take it off and resume wearing number eight on defense. The other interesting fact, at least to me, was that he won the ACC long jump in 2015 with a career PR 26 feet, one and a half inches. In other words, if this dude took track more serious, he most likely would have been competing in the Olympics, but he chose football for obvious reasons. With the fifth pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Jalen Ramsey, defensive back. After making it to the NFL, Jalen Ramsey became the top corner in the league and got paid like it. In seven NFL seasons, he's made six Pro Bowls and became a key contributor to a Super Bowl victory. Ultimately, Ramsey is one of those rare prospects that, despite the crazy hype in high school, he managed to exceed even those expectations. Now, before we go on to number nine, this video is brought to you by SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, festivals, and sports. Soon, I'm gonna go watch the Sacramento Kings host Kevin Durant and the Phoenix Suns, and I can't wait. SeatGeek always wants to make sure that you're getting a good deal. So when you're on the app, look for the green dots. Green means good and red means bad. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee, and SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And I came through for you guys. Use my code KTO for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code KTO. Make sure to click the link in the description to download the app. Coming in at number nine, we have another corner. This time out of Maryland, Kendall Fuller. Fuller played high school ball with fellow stars, Blake Countess and Stefan Diggs. Both Fuller and Diggs earned five-star grades. And Fuller was described by ESPN as, quote, having the size, athleticism, and coverage savvy that is rare in a high school cornerback prospect. He went on to be named the U.S. Army All-American Defensive Player of the Year and chose to attend the school that all of his three older brothers played at, Virginia Tech. Now, as good as Jalen Ramsey was as a true freshman, Fuller was even better, earning ACC Defensive Rookie of the Year with a ridiculous six interceptions. Fuller continued his successful career as a sophomore, earning first team all ACC and second team all American. But a knee injury early into his junior year threw some adversity his way. He still decided to declare for the draft at that point, And unfortunately, because of that injury, he dropped from a first round projection to a third round pick and the 14th corner off the board. 
Fuller has developed into a reliable starter in the league, first as a nickel corner in Washington, then in Kansas City, where he made some huge plays back in their 2020 Super Bowl victory. Now he's back in Washington. So overall, Fuller has carved himself a successful pro career as a multi-year starter. And to wrap up this section, let me bring up his siblings again. This is pretty cool. All four of the Fuller brothers managed to not only have successful college careers, but they all went on to get drafted and played at least five years in the league. The best of which has been the third youngest, Kyle, who's made two Pro Bowls to this point. It's not every day that you see four brothers all excel this much as something. Okay, anyways, let's move on. Taking a look at the eighth ranked recruit, we have the top running back prospect of 2013 out of Richmond, Virginia, Derek Green. Green was a quote, chunky freshman listed at five foot eight, 268 pounds that due to diet and workout changes was able to drop 50 pounds by his junior year. And he turned into a total tank of a running back. He described his own play style this way, quote, I was always downhill. If you look at my film, I'm not really a bounce guy. I'm a one cut and go, real straight, north and south runner, and I have the speed to kick it up in sixth gear. With 40 offers from around the country, Green committed to Michigan, where he became their highest rated running back to sign since 2006. But once he got to campus, it appeared that he started having issues with weight, as he reported to camp at 240 pounds. And to the surprise of many, he didn't play a whole lot as a freshman. As a sophomore, he had a few solid performances before unfortunately breaking his clavicle. And from there, he was never able to get his career on track. He struggled to find carries in this offense, serving as the backup as a junior. Then after transferring to TCU, he ran into the exact same problem, finishing his college career as a rotational back. Green never ended up getting a shot in the NFL following his time in college. Up next, at number seven, we have the top quarterback of 2013, the two-time Gatorade Player of the Year in Washington, Max Brown. Considered one of the more complete passers in this class in terms of measurables, Brown was six foot five and certainly looked the part, and he had the stats and accolades to back it up. After throwing for over 12,000 career yards and 146 touchdowns, Brown went on to commit to the place where all the top pocket passing type quarterbacks seemed to go, USC. Brown ended up redshirting as a true freshman. Then the following year, USC head coach Lane Kiffin was fired, and they hired Steve Sarkeesian. Brown battled for the starting job two years in a row with Cody Kessler, which Kessler went on to win. Then entering his fourth year, once again, another head coaching change was made, and Brown, under his third head coach in four years, officially won the starting job. But it didn't last long. A few poor performances led to his benching for Sam Darnold, and Brown was left no choice but to transfer after the season, eventually landing at the University of Pittsburgh. If things hadn't been rough enough for this guy, after the greatest performance of his career, where he threw for 410 yards and four touchdowns, Brown would suffer a shoulder injury that required surgery and effectively ended his college career. Coming in at number six was defensive tackle Kenny Bigelow. At 6'3", 295 pounds, Bigelow was described as a, quote, explosive and high effort defensive line prospect. He is listed at defensive tackle and will likely settle in as a three technique in college. Bigelow was virtually unblockable with his size and speed, and he went on to commit to USC. But once Bigelow got there, it was a bit of a struggle. He suffered a knee injury as a freshman, was a backup as a sophomore, and suffered another season ending injury before his junior year. Luckily, he was awarded a sixth year of eligibility as a grad student at West Virginia. And finally, this was a season for him to write home about. Bigelow started all 12 games and he finished second team all Big 12. This wasn't amazing considering that he was a five-star recruit, but it was still better than how his college career had gone to that point. And because of the performances of his final year, he did get a shot in the NFL and managed to sign a three-year deal worth $1.7 million with the Saints but was later waived after landing on injured reserve where he reached a settlement with the team and his career was over after that. Moving on to number five, we have the top receiver of the 2013 class coming out of Illinois, Laquan Treadwell. 
At 6 foot 3, 198 pounds, his game was characterized by ESPN as the following, quote, Treadwell is tall and lanky, but with lateral wiggle and speed to not only be a vertical factor, but also one after the catch. He is long and shows good suddenness off the line to create separation and get downfield. Treadwell ended up following his former teammate to Ole Miss, and right away, he made an immediate impact. Treadwell went on to earn SEC Freshman of the Year honors, which made him the first player ever to do so from Ole Miss. And in Treadwell's third year, he went off, leading the entire SEC in receiving yards and touchdowns. For the end zone, Treadwell, jump ball, touchdown. After declaring for the NFL Draft, Treadwell ended his Ole Miss career as the all-time leader in catches, while earning All-SEC First Team Honors, Second Team All-American Honors, and was one of three finalists for the Bolitnikoff Award, which is given to the nation's best wide receiver. Now, Treadwell's pro career hadn't gone as well as he had hoped. After being selected in the first round by the Vikings, he never became a reliable starter. His best season came in Jacksonville in 2021, where he put up 434 receiving yards. But still, this dude managed to live up to his five-star rating in college, and he has been able to stay in the NFL for seven years. Coming in at number four, we have a dude that supposedly had 27 sacks as a senior, which is absurd. That dude was defensive end Carl Lawson. Labeled as one of the most explosive players in the country, the six foot two, 250 pound Lawson was a nightmare for opposing teams. When you see his high school tape, it makes sense why he had so many sacks. The dude was so fast and strong, and Lawson would end up committing to Auburn. Immediately, he was a standout player. 7.5 tackles for loss helped him earn freshman All-American honors. His career did get stumped the next season, however, with an injury that cost him the entire 2014 season. But Lawson managed to bounce back in 2015, being named captain and earning second team All-SEC. Then he saved his best for last. As a senior, he had 12 and a half tackles for loss and nine sacks. Lawson finished his college career earning All-American honors while becoming an award semi-finalist. After his successful college career, Lawson went on to become a fourth round pick in the NFL draft. And for his NFL career, considering his draft position, he's been really solid. He made it on the PFWA All-Rookie Team and is now a full-time starter. Throughout his career, he earned himself a $45 million contract along the way. So good for him. Moving on to the number three recruit of the class and the top linebacker in the country, we have the versatile Jalen Smith. Smith was described by ESPN as the following, quote, Smith is a tall, tapered athlete who can really run and make plays on both sides of the ball. He dominates his inferior competition. He has good length with room for additional body mass and flashes good upper body plane strength plus explosive speed to be effective all over. At 237 pounds, the sky was really the limit for this dude, and he went on to commit to Notre Dame, where he became an immediate starter. Smith went on to make a huge impact as a true freshman, but things really came together when he moved from outside to inside linebacker as a sophomore. That season, his 112 tackles and nine tackles for loss earned him second team All-American honors. Smith continued on his arc of success as a junior, where he was even better, winning the Butkus Award for college football's best linebacker. But sadly, his college career ended about as devastating as it gets. In the Fiesta Bowl, he suffered a brutal knee injury, tearing both his ACL and LCL so badly that he was going to need over a year to recover. After he declared for the NFL Draft, the once projected top five pick was now projected as far down as the sixth round, as many teams saw his knee injury as a red flag with potential nerve damage. Luckily, for Jalen Smith's sake, the Cowboys selected him in the second round, even though they knew that he would miss his entire rookie season recovering. Once he was able to play, Smith eventually became a difference maker, earning a Pro Bowl selection in 2019 and earned himself a $68 million deal with the Cowboys. He also was second in the NFL in tackles in 2020. That's a pretty awesome story considering how his college career ended. Now, coming in at number two, 
we have the top cornerback of the 2013 class, Vernon Hargraves III. As the son of a college coach, who happened to be on the staff of that 2001 Miami Hurricanes team, Hargraves was described by ESPN as, quote, one of the more complete and ready to play corners we have seen in recent years. He went on to become the MVP of the 2013 Under Armour All-American game, and he went on to attend the University of Florida. From day one, it was clear that Hargraves was ready to play, earning first team all SEC honors as a true freshman. I don't care how good you were in high school. To go into the SEC, the best conference in college football, and become arguably the best corner in that conference as a true freshman, that's about as wild as it gets. And Hargraves only got better from there. After three seasons, he made three straight SEC first teams and was a two-time All-American. Once he declared for the NFL Draft, he was right up there in the talks for the top corner in the class, alongside Jalen Ramsey, and Hargraves went on to be selected 11th overall. Now, his NFL career never quite lived up to the expectations of a high first round pick, which was in large part due to multiple injuries. His last season was in 2021, where he bounced around a bit from the Texans to the Bengals. And his last moment in the NFL was that now infamous penalty he earned in the Super Bowl, despite not being active for that game. But in terms of how he's done since high school, he definitely lived up to those expectations in college. Now, for the top recruit of 2013, a dude so hyped up that he was regarded as the best football recruit from the Southeast in 30 years. That was Georgia native Robert Kemdichi. With being just a year younger than this guy, I remember how big of a deal the media was making about him. And for good reason. Whether he lined up on the defensive line or at running back, he looked like a grown man punishing every poor soul that got in his way. I can't believe how explosive and instinctual he looked for being 6'5", 260. It's genuinely frightening. Kemdichi ended up committing to Ole Miss to go play with his brother, while also becoming their highest touted prospect since Eli Manning in 1999. But it's safe to say that this dude was more hype than actual production on the field. As Mississippi's defense developed into the best in the nation, Kemdichi was never more than a big name. His immense size was bigger than his productivity. Occasionally he would make plays and flashed his freakish talent, but he always left fans wanting more. In three years, he totaled just six sacks and 16 tackles for loss. And by many who watched him, they'd consider his time at Ole Miss underwhelming, especially since he was supposed to be the best player from the Southeast in 30 years. Then, in wrapping up his time in college, something bizarre happened. Robert Kemdichi went on to be charged with marijuana possession following a fall from a hotel window. It appears that the victim, which is Kemdiche, broke the window and then walked approximately 15 feet and climbed over a wall and fell approximately 15 feet. The marijuana charge ended up getting him suspended for the Sugar Bowl, which was the final game of his college career. Later on, he would tell NFL teams that it was a rash decision that he made while drunk and that the weed wasn't his. This story is truly bizarre, but despite this story, along with his underwhelming college production and admitting that he was lazy, Kim Dichi was still drafted in the first round. This was because the Cardinals knew that if he got his act together, he could be as dominant as Aaron Donald or J.J. Watt. But that didn't happen. In five NFL seasons, Kim Dichi was mostly a backup, only starting six total games. So overall, the number one recruit of 2013 is a classic example of a guy who was so freakishly gifted that he could coast on that talent all the way to the NFL. And he knew that better than anybody. And if you can become a first round pick being lazy, well, things aren't gonna magically change once you have millions of dollars. Now, in wrapping up this video, despite a few of the guys not living up to the hype, this was really a loaded top 10. Many All-American level players, future NFL starters, and the eventual consensus top corner in the NFL. But one thing that makes football so interesting is that the game at these higher levels is a mix of freak athletes and the lesser talented dudes who worked their asses off to reach that same level. In 2013, one kid in particular was considered a three-star recruit 
and had offers to just three smaller FBS schools. He didn't even get his picture on Rivals. Then, after walking on to two separate teams, this kid became not only a two-time All-American, but the first walk-on to ever win the Heisman Trophy. Of course, I'm talking about Baker Mayfield. Mayfield winds up. 